me, Seren, back to another car video. I'm gonna talk really loud because it's pouring rain. I don't know if you guys can hear the rain or if you can hear my windshield wipers, but it is pouring. So, this is gonna be a quick video though, like really, really quick, because I just don't want to, like, I just don't have too much to say. I feel like it's just repeating. So, a lot of people have been requesting that I make a video on this whole John Boyega and Spike Lee and She's Gotta Have It situation. Season 2 of She's Gotta Have It came out on Netflix. That's the show based off of Spike Lee's movie, She's Gotta Have It, which follows Nola Darling. And there's an episode, there's a, there's a scene in an episode of the second season, but there's a conversation about black British actors versus black American actors and uh, some talk about how you know black Brits are coming over here for roles and uh, the whole dialogue around oh well black Brits are better for the roles they're better trained and they don't come with the racial baggage which we've talked about several times on this channel for at least two years now like this whole concept of like they're better they're better trained uh, they don't come with the racial baggage they're racially unshackled from american history from american racist history so like they're not like emotionally like you know they're able to just act quote unquote just do the role and just act which we discussed on this channel several times so that's like extremely offensive um in the episode no i believe it is nola that says she's like no that's not what it is it's like british actors are just cheap and there was like a whole thing around it which discussed again several of the topics that we've discussed on this channel about how ultimately what it comes down to is that there's a social hierarchy that puts whites on top non-black persons of color next um non-american blacks next and then black americans descendants of american chattel slavery dead last at the bottom here in the united states because we do have a certain history with the racism of this country as the descendants of american chattel slavery i'm surprised to hear that spike lee even covered that on the show because spike lee has been known to say that himself about um black british actors that they're better trained that you know he's he's been known to say things like oh they're better than black american actors because like they didn't come up in music videos and things of that nature because like spike lee loves his respectability politics he plays into his respectability politics you can tell that like maybe he's changed his mind maybe he's like observed some of the conversations that have been sort of going um over the past few years around this and he has really like seen the dialogues and maybe he's changed his mind because like previously he was one of those people that was just like you know they're trained in the land of shakespeare or white european man so they're automatically better right that's again that's like respectability politics that's that white man's ice is motherfucking colder um which i do not subscribe to in any way shape or form and again it's just also extremely racially insensitive and and insensitive to our ethnicity as black americans to also say well you could do a better role because like you are unshackled from from the history the history doesn't bother you and it's it's offensive right like it's rude uh and we've talked about it again several times of course john boyega had to be the one to get involved because this man is motherfucking garbage and the irony that he used the word trash number one the first time when fucking Samuel L. Jackson said Daniel Kaluuya was great in Get Out, but he was wondering what an actual black American, someone that is like more intimate with American racism, because this is a movie that was supposed to be about a really specific sort of strain of American racism. Samuel L. Jackson said, you know, oh, Daniel Kaluuya was great, but I wonder what a black American would bring to the role. Now, who was the one that jumped out the motherfucking window? John Boyega, okay? This man is like Gina Torres except black like he does not like black americans he does not like black americans anytime a black american has something to say he jumps out of the window insulting us and i don't even like spike lee as y'all know but i'm also need him to ease the fuck up off of these black american icons like my nigga you don't get to fucking talk out the side of your neck to samuel L. jackson john boyega you don't get to talk out the side of your neck to motherfucking spike lee john boyega these are men that they're the whole reason why you even have a motherfucking career here in the united states and it's never going to be wild to me of people that come here to have opportunities and then spit in the face of the people that made those opportunities possible for them you have opportunities john boyega because of spike lee you have the opportunity to be in motherfucking star wars because of samuel L. jackson show some motherfucking respect but they don't have respect for us so that's not surprising he tried to fucking 
somebody put something about the conversation um, from She's Gotta Have It on Twitter. He fucking retweeted it with oh, trash. My nigga, you some motherfucking trash, right? You are some trash, okay? Like, you always have something to say about a very reasonable dialogue that needs to be had and has been had. We've been talking about it now for years. It's a real issue, but you don't have no respect for black Americans. You don't have no respect for the black American filmmakers and directors and actors that even made it possible for you to come here and have a career because you don't respect us. Because again, as we've continued to say, everybody is fine with having us on the bottom. And again, it's very interesting that people like to call this conversation xenophobic. Like I said, we're xenophobic against black Brits when they're the ones that don't like us, right? They don't like us. They don't like black Americans. They don't like us in our own country. They're xenophobic towards us, right? But we can't say anything because they're foreign, so they're automatically better than us, and they're automatically right, and we're automatically wrong. It's absurd. It's ridiculous. I'm glad that the conversation was had on that episode of She's Gotta Have It. Um, again, surprising, because Spike Lee has held some of those beliefs in the past. Maybe he's seen some of the ruckus and changed his mind. Maybe he's just talking about it because it's hot. I really don't know. Unsurprisingly, John Boyega jumped out the window calling it trash. Unsurprisingly, you have black Brits talking about it on social media that totally don't get the concept despite the fact that we've been having this conversation for well over a year now because they are xenophobic towards us. They have no respect towards us or our ethnicity. They come here for opportunities and they'll tell you, well, we're here because we can't get put on in Britain. They don't respect the black actors there, so we have to come to the United States. But yet you don't have respect for the black actors that made that possible for you. It, it's wild. It makes no sense. I don't understand it. I just, like, and it's the same conversation we've been having for a really long time. I don't know what it's going to take for people to, like, clue in to, like, what is going on. So, I just, I'm going to include tons of links in the description box to old videos, including old videos um, on this mentioning John Boyega. John Boyega also needs to shut up because in every movie he's in, he got a white brunette. He playing a step and fetch to some white brunette hoe. Star Wars, white brunette hoe. Pacific Rim, white brunette hoe. Attack the block, white brunette hoe. Like you like to play second fiddle to white bitches. So I'm gonna need you to ease on ease on up off of uh, our black American iconic filmmakers that made it possible for you to even have a career where you play step and fetch it. Step and fetch, excuse me, to these white bitches. Okay? Like and then there was people that was like, oh well, uh, black Americans don't understand us. Just a lot of gaslighting. It's like, well, but you don't understand us either. And you think you understand us just because you watch TV just like a white person. I think they know everything about us because it's some motherfucking music videos. Like, it's it's very similar. Like, it's extremely the same. <laughs> Which we've talked about again. Like, the reason why I keep saying, like, I don't want to keep talking about this at this point. Just like, after a certain point, I stopped talking about white people on the channel. Because it's like, how long am I supposed to fucking talk about this shit? Like, I keep saying the same thing over and over. And it, and it even be the same players repeatedly like this isn't the first time John Boyega has been involved in this type of situation right like this isn't the first time that even Spike Lee has been involved in this type of situation now previously he was in the dynamic from the other side of saying that he had more respect for black British actors and black American actors but we keep having these like roundabouts 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 like I've already told y'all what it is like social hierarchy that places black Americans at the bottom and everybody everybody no exceptions is invested in maintaining that social hierarchy to keep us at the bottom. Everyone, everyone. The whites are invested, the non-black persons of color are invested, the foreign blacks, the non-American blacks are also invested. Because as long as we are at the bottom and everybody got their foot on our neck, they're gonna be able to, uh, to succeed and jump ahead of us, okay? They're gonna be able to benefit from opportunities that we fought for while spitting in our faces. They're gonna be able to climb on our backs and expect us to carry them like mules to the promised land while we remain at the bottom. Everyone is invested. Yes, black British actors are also cheaper. It's true. Yes, there is an expectation that they're going to be better trained, less ghetto, not came up in music videos, trained in the land of Shakespeare, like as if there's no uh, acting conservatories in the United States, Juilliard, Howard, Yale, right? No. And there's still the belief that, oh, they're racially unshackled, which 
is that or is that not some type of like ethnic appropriation, which is what we've been talking about, the use of black American culture to get ahead without being any type of morally invested in us or our culture or our ethnicity or our well-being as a group, but just using us, right? And anytime you say anything about it, you get called xenophobic, even though they're the ones that don't like us, period, the end. That's that. And John Boy, you get some trash. I'm gonna need him to really fall back off our black American icons, or he can go back home. It's raining. <laughs>